That looks great, man. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Still had trouble with the stem, and um, I did have questions about the mesh. Okay. What's the question? How do I clean it up? Because when you click on it, it's a little rough, and being in 3D, uh, that hurts me. What's rough? I don't see anything rough. Like, it doesn't feel clean, like it's kind of out of place. Like where? Uh, click on it. Okay. Yeah, how it doesn't feel balanced, like a 3D model. So if I look at this in a 3D model, it irks me sometimes, especially if it's something like an It's not a 3D model. I know, but the mesh makes me... I know, but the mesh, what matters is what it looks like here. <clears throat> Does that make sense? Yeah. I also if you want to change up the mesh, then you could go in here and go... I mean, you could come in here and move these around however you want, right? But if you want to clean up that or change it or whatever, you're going to have to go in with a with the white arrow tool and direct selection tool and just go in and move it around. Is that what you're asking? Mm -hmm. Yes. But this isn't a 3D model. It's emulating 3D. So, and I understand what you're saying. Have you taken Frank's class? Yeah. Okay. So he's probably told you a lot about organizing all that stuff. And now you're, and I get it. He's probably talking about creating a clean model and all that kind of stuff. This is purely visual, right? And when I click this off, this looks great. And that's not easy to do, man. Get all these smooth transitions and all that stuff. And especially this the way this dips down and this little highlight. I mean, that is super great. Okay. I mean, I don't have any complaints about it. Any other questions? About, does that answer that? Yeah, uh, I try to smooth the edge right here, but it's a little sharp. There, uh, where the where the highlight is. Up here. Yeah, I try to smooth it, but it I don't know if I've ever tried to use a smooth tool in here. Can you? No, I tried. Okay, it'd be another thing where I'd probably have to come in here. Again, with my direct selection tool and maybe another thing sometimes you have to do is like add a point or maybe pull this down a little, you know, just adjust it a little bit. So I get this, so I get a little more of a rounder edge. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's just like fine tuning, tweaky. That's getting softer right there now. Like here, we got a little bit of a hard edge. So I'd probably pull that down a little bit and maybe this. And just start softening up some of these edges and see if I can get, if I could get my, um, my, uh, yeah, my handles here and sort of round them off a little bit. Does that make sense? Like that. So that's going to start rounding, softening up these edges. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, another thing you can do. Does that all make sense? Okay. Oh, yeah. So let's go make a new layer here. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go get a round ellipse tool, make it too big for now. Now I'm going to go up here to my swatches and go uh, just my black and white default. I'm actually, let me dial in this color right here. I just want to make sure I do. Probably not good. Let's see how this looks. So I'm putting it over there so I can gauge it. That's probably better. Now I'm just gonna take this color to make it easy on myself and drag it into my swatches so I have it there right there. I could, I could double click it, name it and all that if I wanted. By the way, when I hover over it, you see that right there that pops up and it says C equals 20, M equals 80, Y equals 89, and K equals nine something. That's your CMYK mix. So if I bring up color here, wherever it is, where's my color? There it is. For some reason it's shown in RGB here. So I'd have to shift the whole, let's see if I can. I'm gonna go to edit colors, convert to CMYK. 
Let's see if it did. Well, this so I'm like, I don't know why it's not switching. That's weird. But so it's giving me uh, this in this case, it's giving me my RGB mix. If it was a uh, four color process, which is CMYK, it would give me four bars here. And over here's the percentage of each color that makes this color. Does that make sense? Okay, because you need to understand that when you're going into the print process, I'm going to probably do a little talk on this later. Uh, you know, they're generating four pl uh, plates in the four color process, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Okay, and those four colors are what makes every color you see. Okay, which is, makes no sense to me, but that's how it works. Okay, so I'm going to go back here. I'm going to go back to my swatches, do a gradient thing, and I'm going to switch this gradient. Or let's see. Yeah, I'm going to switch this. Number one, I'm going to go into my gradient palette right here. And I'm going to switch this right there to not a not a linear, but a, a circular, right? So now see how it's generating out from the center? So now I'm going to go in here and double click it and go, I think this is my custom color right here. And then I'm going to click this one, same color. Only this one, I'm going to go to zero probably. And I can start to get those little freckles all over the um, apple. These little things, right? So if you look at it, basically when I look at it, oops. It's this color and it sort of fades out, right? So I just made a gradient that's that color and fades out, okay? And I did it as a circular gradient, not a linear gradient, which is the second one here. Now I'm gonna pull all this. You know, and I could start scattering this around. As they go out this way, I might have to shift the color a little bit and make them more round. Why am I making them squished over here? Anybody? It's further away. It's starting to crawl around. So the the if I'm looking straight at a circle, right? As it starts to go around, it's going to become an ellipse as it goes around something. Does that make sense? Okay. But you see how we can add the little, and that'd be your final touch in your app, right? Yeah, this is really nice. I don't know if I could do that good a job on this. I've never been great with the gradient mesh tool. I blame Josh, but just because it can't be my fault. Wow, another good one. Wow, this is nice. Thank you. Man, super clean, smooth. Yeah? Yeah. What do you think? Um, I had a hard time getting it as one object, so I actually divided up the apple into two, and that helped. Well, I don't know how you did it, but it looks cool. <laughs> like, you want? are you talking about this up here, the stem and all that? I oh, know. I'm talking about the part of the top part of the apple. Oh, oh wow, mm -hmm. that's great. Yeah, that's fine. God, that's really good. Oh, yeah. I had a question uh -huh. for the mesh tool. You know how you use the direct selection tool to move the individual points? Yeah. Um, for some reason, on my Illustrator, when I would click and move, as I'm moving, the whole mesh would disappear. So I wouldn't oh, be disappear? able to see. Yeah, so I wouldn't be able to see where I'm moving the point. I don't know what that would do. Yeah, now, and then you, okay. So if you're not, if you like, what I usually do is I click like out here, mm -hmm. and what it does is it gives me all my points unselected. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
And then I can come in here and just start moving these things around. So you might have somehow clicked off it because once you do that, it, it disappears. Okay, I right. think I'll mess with them more and see. Yeah, so what I usually do is I just find a point where I'm not clicking on a point or anything because I want all these white because once I click them, that means they're active. Mm -hmm. But it, it, and even if I go, well, it still stays here. But if I go, if I click off at all, it's going to disappear. Mm -hmm. And then you can adjust it. But that should be the only reason why it disappears. Hmm. Now, okay. another thing we can do. I could start putting this information in there. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'd probably edit it, probably wouldn't be, you know, I wouldn't put every little vein in there or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then I'd probably come in here with my width tool getting closer. Thin that out a little bit. Then I might just go and then if I get any that are starting to feel the same, then I come here with my white arrow tool and reshape it a little bit. Make it a different looking line. You know, and then I might even go you know, once I got it actually built, gosh darn it, hang on. I might try an overlay or something. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. That's too much. Changing the color too much. So I'm just going to go back up here to normal. And I think I'm just going to pull down the opacity a little. So it marries into the color underneath a little more. You can start putting that in. Yeah. So now we know how to put the little freckles on it and then the veins of the leaf, right? Mm -hmm. You have any other questions? Uh, no, I think I'm okay. Okay, good, really nice. Thank you. Oh, Josh. Good. What do you think? I thought I had done all right. And then I saw everyone else's and I'm like, oh, this is so That's good. good. That's yeah. good. Yeah. But I actually think this is smooth. good too. Did you do this? Did you do these veins in the in the mesh? No. Oh, okay. No, I did it. Uh, yeah, no, it's separate. I grouped it though. And it's on its own layer. Yeah, yeah. No, this is fine. You yeah, now that I saw like, huh? Now that I saw how other people did it, I'm like, okay, it makes sense, like how to do it like that. But uh, that's what's good about, again, that's what's good about, to me, about being in a class because you, you know, you get all these yeah, people, you oh, all just ideas. train myself. It's like you're not in a class where you're looking at other people's work and being in that mix and that discussion. It's different, right? Yeah, I still think it looks good though. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm happy with it. I'm just like, okay, I know what I'm gonna. <laughs> and then if you, you know what, if you dance the little freckles all over it, it would, mm -hmm. it would look pretty damn good. Because mm -hmm. you're getting your transitions are still cool. You know, they got a little bit of meat to them, which is nice, and the way they're kind of really dark, and this way this fades. Up. That's not easy to do. I don't think this is easy to do. Right. Okay, that's why I always kind of go, okay, we got to get through this thing. But it's like, I don't think it's easy to do. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, good job. You have any questions? Um, no. 
Yeah, so Josh just knows everything. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I used to hate it when I got teachers like that. Hey, where's my stem and my leaf? Sorry, I didn't realize that we were supposed to put that in. I don't really care that much. It's fine. What do you think? It's all right. Not my favorite tool. <laughs> yeah, not mine either. But I, I try to keep my own opinion out of it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Because then you guys come in here and you do all this really nice work with it. And I go, I don't think I could do that on it. You know, like I'm, I'm not, I'm just not very good with this tool. Um, any questions? Uh, no, not really. Yeah, it looks fine. What I just want to make sure, I want to make sure that you guys know how to use it. You're introduced to it and you might go, eh, whatever. Or it might trigger something in your brain and you go right down the rabbit hole with it and start doing all this amazing stuff with it. That would be, you know, sometimes I see that with students with tools that I go, I don't really like this thing. And then they do all this amazing stuff with it, which is really cool. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And again, this is that one that they're using when they're doing these photorealistic, um, you know, those photorealistic things we looked at online, right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Wait a minute. Okay, well, okay. Hey, Kayla, you know, I think that the deadline, you know, that internship thing for Nickelodeon, right? Oh, no, you are applying for it. You already did. Yeah, I'm in the process of it right now. Okay, because you talked to Frank and all that about it, right? Yeah. Okay, because somebody else is asking me for a letter of recommendation. Okay, who's this? This is Ray. Where are you at? Yeah, I'm here. What do you think? Um, it was okay. Kind of hard to use. Yeah, it's tricky. Um, you'd have to get in here and get these transitions a little smoother. Mm -hmm. Now, having said that, the first thing I would do before I did that is I'd make another layer and put the freckles all over it. Because okay. it might look fine when you do that. Okay. Uh, you know what I mean? Yep. So a lot of times when I'm working like this, I think ahead a little bit and go, oh, I need to do all this work. And then when I go and do the next layer of work, like maybe it's those little marks all over it. I go, mm -hmm. it looks fine once I put those on. I don't need to do all this mm -hmm. other stuff. So always kind of look at that, right? Kind of think ahead a yeah. little bit and, and make sure you're putting that on its own layer. So then you can just turn it on and off and see how you like it and all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But I, I think it's fine. It looks like you know how to use it. It's fine. Mm -hmm. You just have to go in and add some things in here for these little transitions to smooth them out if you wanted to, right? Okay. You guys, this is the hardest part right here. All you guys got this. I mean, that totally feels believable. And I think that's the hardest part right there to get that little dip. It got squashed. Where are you at? Man. How come it got squashed? Oh, sorry. Uh, you can make it bigger. No, I don't care. Yeah. It's not that big a deal. It looks more like a tomato now, right? Yeah. So what do you think? Uh, I see where I can improve. Uh, I got to work on the like shadow on the corner, right? I'd get this little part up here, the little dip. Yeah. I'd knock these the veins back a little bit. They're a little bright. And you might just pull down the opacity a little bit. And then yeah. as these move around, so you did these, so that's cool. As these move around the form, they're probably going to get, they're going to shift in color. Oh, this is a line. They're going to shift in color a little bit. Does that make sense? Yeah. So as they move into this over here, you might have to darken them just a hair or like here, darken them a hair. They're actually okay. fine out here, but that's about it. Right. And then get a little more where this, where this, shadows following the form a little bit okay yeah you know what you're seeing in that picture where you're just sort of referencing what's happening there right yeah and you notice it's not like a it's really not like a sphere it's getting like because it has little facets little subtle facets on the front of or on a whatever you call it uh, apple right so it's not just a perfectly smooth transition it's getting these little imperfections and facets and things like that right mm-hmm that's why it gets these little 
master it's not like the sphere you drew in basic drawing is in, in other words right it's still following the same properties of that but it's got little imperfections of facets and all that so it's going to the shadow values and everything in a flatten out and hard edge out here and not hard edge but gets sharper edges right yeah but you feel confident you kind of understood it uh yeah it's pretty tricky but yeah it's pretty cool at the same time but yeah i i see where i can improve okay just as long as you kind of understand the basic thing of that tool because i used to okay, spend cool. too much time on this project to be honest with you and um i didn't really see, at the end of the day i didn't really see the um value of it of spending that much time on it because you know you know it now so if you want to go pursue it you can mm -hmm. ah, another one where are you at right here what do you think it's uh kind of frustrating to use sometimes but it was fun i uh just kind of wanted to work with it a little bit longer <laughs> go go in and play around with it yeah it was yeah it was kind of fun to use but it's like hard to get used to trying to like make the transitions and stuff yeah you know what it's kind of good for though it really makes you see that what you just said transitions right mm -hmm. um, which is really important whether you're painting or like traditional painting or digital painting you need to see that you know what i mean mm -hmm. so like anything it clarifies that maybe that's what i like about one of the things i like about illustrator like this you know you go okay i've got to really go in there and figure out that little mid-tone that's going between the dark and the light right because mm -hmm. that's really probably what you're talking about and that yeah. be a new transition and then you got to figure that out like how do i just nail that like darken it up a little bit keep the color in it make sure the temperature is right all that stuff um, yeah, and, and then trying to figure out how to smooth the transitions was kind of hard too yeah it's going to be what i just said you know, you know how are you going to you know dark mid light if you're hitting those three things a lot of times you'll get a nice smooth transition right mm -hmm. um so you might just need to go in here between this, like this dark, see it's going dark to, to pretty light. Yeah. So you probably need a mid-tone transition right there. Okay. Or it could even be that you go and you spread out, uh, you know, just spread that out a little more. So just, you know, transitions a little smoother, not so abruptly, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> do you have any questions about it? Uh, not really. Okay. It is what it is, right? Yeah. And also another thing I like about it in relation to um, like painting or whatever is that Illustrator super shape driven. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and the more you're thinking about that shape, that that translates into everything you're doing. Yeah. Somebody. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go over some another tool that I just want to go over briefly, and we'll just do a quick exercise on it, just like this one. Um. And it's fairly straightforward. Hang on. There, there. Okay, see this? Where'd it go? Oh, here it is. Right here. Right, that little perspective grid. Victor, you see it? I just don't see it. <laughs> right here. This little this little button right here. I, I see it, but I don't want to see it. <laughs> Why is that? You don't like perspective? Uh, that's part of it, and the tool was a little frustrating to use. Directly. It's a weird tool. Yeah. It is a weird tool. That's why we're going to talk about it. Because here's another thing that happens all the time. And I've had this happen to people who are working for me and stuff. They're working on something, and they go, they get really mm -hmm. far into something they're doing in Illustrator or whatever, and then they accidentally hit that tool, and they're like, I can't get rid of this thing, right? Which is sucks. So here's the little... It's a weird tool. Here's the little, can't even move it. Wait, maybe I have to be on here. No, maybe you just can't move it. Okay, but see this little thing right here? The little cube? Josh, you see that? Okay, I don't know why you can't move it. That's super weird. Just another weird thing about this tool. Let me try one more thing here. No, I guess you can't. You have to be on this tool to then close it and get rid of it. Otherwise, you can't get rid of it, okay? If you don't know that, it's really frustrating, okay? 
because I've actually done that too, where I'm working on something and I, and I literally scrapped everything and started a new file because I couldn't figure out how to get out of it. I already did it twice myself. No, oh, see, <laughs> All right, I should have told you that right in the beginning. So let's click it. What just happened? There it is. Okay, now if you go up here into window, I think it's under view, perspective grid. I can do high grid, one point, two point, three point. We're just gonna do two point, okay? But you can go in there and change it. I'm not sure if it has a palette, I think it does. No, it doesn't look like it does. Okay. Now, so, and, and I'll probably be rusty with this because I don't use it all that much. What we're going to do, so this little thing over here that I can't move, which is super annoying. See how it's blue over here? And then I can click here and it goes orange. I can click down here and it goes light blue or whatever. If you notice, it corresponds to the orange on this grid and the blue on this grid and then the ground plane, right? So if I come in here and I click on the blue, it puts my whatever into perspective, right? So I'm gonna click off this. I'm gonna to go to, oh, that's so annoying, here it is. I'm gonna put this back over here. Uh, we'll go to this color. And now I'm gonna click on the other um, plane right there. And I'll pull another. And now maybe I'll come in here and go a little darker. And then maybe I'm gonna come back over here. I gotta be in my perspective grid to be able to use any of these tools. So that's another thing, it'll drop out of it. And then you're like, why isn't it working? You gotta go back to the perspective tool. Does that make sense? Now I could go, or I should be able to go. So let's put that there. Let's see if I can do this. I'm gonna to go to my, okay, so then if I hold, click and hold this, it's got a perspective selection tool. So I'm gonna try and, so I just went our usual option, um, whatever you call it, drag, and it put that in perspective. I'm gonna hit Command D, and I think it put that one in perspective, I think. I don't know if it did that one or not. I can also hold command here. Hang on, I should be able to do this. Well, I'm on the selection tool, so it's fine. Yeah, it did do it, okay. So I'm gonna grab, I'm still on this selection tool. I'm gonna pull it out and let's see if I can just grab all three of these now. And I can start to make my building. Does that make sense? Now I'm going to switch over to this plane. It's too long, but it's fine. See, I didn't go in perspective because I wasn't on my direct select or my perspective selection tool. And now it should go. There it goes. It's changing it in perspective. You got to be on that either the uh, when you're doing tweaking things in there you got to be on the little second tool which is the perspective selection tools Does that makes sense okay now another thing here let's go let's say we're going to put i'm going to go to this one it'll put my um ellipses hang on I'm gonna put a circle. So I'm, I'm clicking, holding a circle. It's keeping it in perspective. 
then it gets too big here. So I'm going to go to my, I'm on my direct selection tool, shrink it down a little bit. Let's just darken that so we can see it. <coughs> Let's see if I can do this. I'm going to go back over to this other plane. You can do type. I'm forgetting how to do it. Let's try this. I'm going to go into my direct selection tool. Yeah, now it's putting, I just cut and pasted it in and now it's, this is going to be your corporate overlord, Mike Industries, Josh. Mike Inc. Okay, and then I could come back here and start making something else. Let's go back over to this one. So I'll put a thinner building here maybe. Let's get rid of that. Hang on. Let's go a little taller. Then back over to the other, whatever you call it, pull it down. And you can see I can start and then let's do one more thing. So now I'm going to click this bottom one because what's that going to do? Hang on, I got to be on my tool here, there. So now I could come in here and go, I'm going to pick uh, this. Oops. This always screws me up for some reason. Wait a minute, stop giving me the ground plane. Hang on. Well, that's one. There. So I'm going to make this. Now it went out of perspective. Hang on. That's because I wasn't on my direct selection tool. And then I'm going to send this to the back. You know, and then I could come in here and go. Oops. Hang on. Got to get closer. And it could put my, and these are too big, obviously, but I'm going to go Command D, and it would put those into perspective. So I could start to build a street, let's say. Then I'm going to put all this behind all this. And I could start to build a city. Does that make sense? Okay, very simple. You know, I'd probably put some street lamps on there, blah, blah, blah. Now, another thing I could do is I could go over here and go into another document, let's say. Let's make this a different color. That's a stupid color. Hang on. That's better. And I'm going to go here. Maybe go a little different color up there. And by the way, right up here, you got your align tools right there. I don't know if I've talked about those. So if I take this and I go up to my align right here, right here, it'll line them up straight down the middle. Think, see that? Yeah. Or it'll line them up to the side, this side, top, this way, that way. But we want that way and this way. That makes sense? Okay, so now I'm going to go 
I'm just going to make a quick little simple thing here. Because if I come over here and I create it, I might be able to get a little more. Uh, let's say it's nighttime. A little better um, design if I'm not trying to build it in that grid. Well, I'll just put a couple of things here. You know, I could put some curtains in there and blah, blah, blah. And let's say this is my building. Yeah? Select all, I'm gonna group it. Command, whatever. I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna go, I think I have to go to my direct selection tool or my selection tool for this. And I'm on, I wanna be on my left plane here. Oops. There it goes. So put it now into perspective. And I can go up here, hold shift, make it bigger. When I'm in my perspective selection tool, and then I just have to build the, you know, probably bring one in from this side. Go to this, make sure I'm on my direct selection tool, go boom. This one's gonna come in here somewhere. I have to fix this little overhang here, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. And then I could start to make a little more. So what I would do actually, when I brought this in, if I knew I was going to do that, I would have built this. So this side, was more like that. That way I could break it where it's not, or I could even pull in the interior of this part Let's see if I can do that. I don't know if it'll let me do it. Let's grab this, get on this plane. Won't let me grab just the one thing. So I'd have to probably, yeah, I'd have to do it before I brought it in. But you can see how you can get to a much more complex build that way, okay? Now, it's also good for like graphics. A lot of people do those, you know, perspective, you know, um, just like I did with my name where the you know the graphics are coming towards you in perspective of the the type does that make sense you see it a lot with that it's really handy for that um it could also be really handy if i was doing something like this and i wanted to make just a graphic really fast hang on If I wanted to take some, maybe some flat graphics like that and sort of turn them into a quick little kind of 3D idea. Does that make sense? Because these are all just vector, simple vector things, right? There's a lot of things in here you could take from his stuff. You know, these are flat. You know, if I thought them out, I could actually get a quick little environment with that, right? Really graphic though, like real vectory, real graphic, which would be cool in certain cases, right? Hmm. This guy doesn't work for Disney, so I'm not really sure what his trip is, but, um, or here, look at this one. You know, that kind of stuff, right? Hang on a sec. Let's see if I can find this. Here it is. I think. Yeah. 
Hang on, let me find this. And I'll give you a heads up where we're going to probably start maybe next week. Where is this? Here it is. So, and these aren't done in, I don't, in vector, but it gives you a little bit of an idea for this exercise of something you can kind of do. Does that make sense? I don't expect it to be that elaborate. I expect it, but I mean, I'm just saying you could do something like that. You know, if you do it, if you do it as a night scene, then you can instantly light up the windows. It becomes a lot more interesting. <coughs> also, you know, you can take very simple shapes like this just drop line over it and stuff like that and just, and break up the buildings very easily. You could put a gradient behind this right here and it'll look like it's lit up and going darker. You know, there's a bunch of stuff you can do. Maybe build it over here. I'm not expecting you to go to the ends of the earth with it. I just wanna make sure you know how to use a tool. It's sort of like the Apple tool exercise. I just wanna make sure you know how to use it. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it. Um, I'd like to just go over them on Wednesday and be done with it. And I wanna move into brushes. And then I wanna move into, does that all make sense? Two point. And then hang on. What I'm going to start moving into probably next week. We're going to start talking about um, brush creation. I can ever find this. Yeah, here we go. So brush creation. And then I'm going to want to do an organic project. Okay. Hang on. I have a stupid, another, another faculty meeting on Wednesday. Okay. It's anyway, um, we're going to move into an organic project, I think, right? This is illustrator. Okay. And the reason I like this is a lot of people don't realize you can do this kind of thing in illustrator, right? This, see how that feels very brushy, right? This, this, all this stuff. So what I'd like, usually what we do is either do like a travel poster, a national parks poster, something that's gonna have uh, texture and organic stuff in it, right? Yeah? This one right here, if you notice, this is just like what we talked about where we're just taking a rough brush against this dark and boom, you get tree bark, right? And then I'm also gonna show you how to create brushes and also create um, pressure sensitive brushes, okay? Um, you know, that go thin to thick and all that stuff you wanna freehand or something like that, okay? Does that all make sense? So what I start thinking about, the reason I tell you guys this is kind of start thinking about what you want to do. Okay, because you don't have to worry about it till next week. Yeah. You want to do a travel poster? And then if you have something else, you go, I don't want to do either one of those. I want to do this. If it satisfies the project, I don't care. Does that make sense? Kayla? And again, there's this dude. Who does a lot of freehand? A lot of texture, right? Say what? Uh, something with a lot of texture. Yeah, some you know uh, the 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 best kind of way to think of it is like maybe um. 
uh, like I had somebody one year do something and she picked, I forgot where it was, somewhere in like Sweden or something, I can't remember. And she did this landscape with this, this famous castle that's there. So the castle had texture. Then she had all this landscape stuff. It was a really cool piece. I'll try and find it. It was really cool. And I've had a lot of people, you know, some people do a travel thing to some, you know, a forest or something like that, right? I mean, but there's other ways you can handle it. I just want to, I want us to have something that's really brushy and organic looking. Okay. Um, and again, have an excuse to go through making brushes. Yeah. Now, if you don't have a tablet, you're not going to be able to do pressure sensitive, but I'll still go through it with you and you can do the project. You don't have to have a tablet to do this project at all. Um, matter of fact, I probably would mostly just do it with, uh, you know, the way we've been working. Does that make sense? So you want to think of something that's, especially now you guys are starting to get in your, you just went through a thing where you've all done really well with your shape creation and all that kind of stuff. And now let's like really put it together and let's add some texture to it. Does that make sense? And a, and a good way to work with this is to really get all your shapes built first and then go in and add your texture. Cause sometimes the texture, cause what's happening with illustrator. Um, if you have, let's take this, hang on. Okay. So this all makes sense though, right? You notice what this looks like? I just noticed, Josh. What is it? It looks like that building on the at the corner on Front Street. Yeah. You know what yeah, that's actually. That's weird. That's totally subliminal. Hey, Mike. I have a question on the perspective. Yeah. Uh, if you move it around, is there a way to just reset it back to either a certain point or back to uh, normal? <laughs> what do you mean normal like not in perspective uh no just like back to how it started like how you how it, just like the basic points like if i cut and paste something in uh no so if you so go ahead uh go let, me pull it up. let me pull yeah. it up i should have left it open okay so and then like if you move points around to say like you want you know your left bp further oh yeah you can come out here it's right here. Yeah. Also, Is there a way to like save those points? To uh, that? I think it's just going to save it in the document. Okay. And, and if you want to just... Way, that's a good thing you brought up. Also, you can come here and you can move these around too. There's, a, there's a, quite a few little tweaky things you can do in here. Oh, that's cool. Pull this up or down. You can pull, I think, the horizon line up. I think. Maybe not. I thought you could pull the horizon line up. There it goes. So I could do a canted angle. How did you pull the horizon line up? I just had to pull this last point here. So this little oh. one pulls it up and down. And then this one pulls this, however. And then, look, I can push it out. That's, cool. that's how you do it. You grab it here and then just keep pushing it out. So if you need a less, which you normally would, you wouldn't want it too tight. Mm -hmm. You know, you always see people and they've got a piece of paper this big and they put their vanishing points here and everything's right. like super forced. And you're like, it's got to be out here, you know? You know, so there, are, and then let's see here. Yeah, here we can bring it up more. Let's see if we can pull it this way now. Oh, wait, here. Not sure what that one does actually. I'll have to look that up. I don't think I don't think there's any real reason to pull out that grid. Let's see if you can hide the grid. Which is good because then you could turn it off and see how your your work looks without the grid on there, which is sometimes you need to do that. Um Show grid. I always like to have rulers. Command R. There's my rulers. You. What else do I have on here? Lock station point. Not sure what that is. Save grid as preset. You know, on it. So you could probably save this, and then when you went back in, you'd have it to your point in another document and go. Oh, I want to use that one again. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
What's let's see what this does. Oh, that just moves the whole thing. And then this pulls this down. So, you know, you can set it up. You know, I'd actually tweak it out a little bit when I did it so I could get, you know, because like this kind of thing. I don't know. It's kind of fun to play around in, see how far. You, what I like to do is look at a tool and go this. I don't know about this and then go, well, I want to try and make something really cool with it just to prove that I can. You know what I mean? Right. The only reason. Um, OK, so I just want a cityscape two point. It could be simple. It could be more extreme. I don't care. I just want to make sure that I know you know how to use the tool. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. What I had to do with the type, and I, I have to look this up because I'm not sure if you can type it directly and I can't remember. I don't remember you can, but I just type my name and then I, I cut it. And then I went back to my perspective selection tool, pasted it back into the side I wanted on, and it went right into perspective. Yeah. So, you know, and then you can adjust the size and all that stuff. Does that make sense? Yeah. And that answered that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just not a tool I've used all that much. But again, I probably use it for type and things like that. You know, if I was going to do a, I mean, I don't know. I might use it for, like I said, like if I was going to do some real vectory looking, like maybe I might use it and do a three point. If I was going to do maybe, maybe I will use it next time I do one of these. Um, if I was going to do a map of like this area, you know, those like fun ones where everything's kind of coming out at you and it's yeah. kind of cartoony and all that. I might use it for something like that. That might be kind of fun. And then I might, who knows, I might take it into um, Photoshop and port it into Photoshop and soften some things up and dance some texture over it and all that kind of stuff. And it, you know, it might just have kind of a fun vector look, you know what I mean? I could even tweak it a lot more in Photoshop and all that kind of stuff. Um, Cause obviously going back and forth between these two things, you know, that's what a lot of people do, obviously. Right. Yeah. Sometimes you'll see some things, you know, how are they doing that Photoshop or uh, illustrate it might be, they took it in Photoshop, but I mean, you could do a lot. You're starting, I, hopefully you're starting to see, you could do a lot of stuff in Photoshop or an illustrator that's more organic than people think. Cause I think people always think of illustrators being this very super flat graphic thing. Right. Which is, which I love by the way, but when you, and then when you add texture and all that to it, it just makes it more interesting. You know what I mean? But if you want to get like, if you want to get like something that's going to read, like if I'm going to, if somebody came to me and I probably mentioned something like this before, but if somebody came to me and goes, we want to do a branding thing for, like outdoor graphics or something. You know what I mean? Maybe banners that are on um, light poles. You know, you see those sometimes. Okay, any questions on that? Everybody knows what they're doing? I'm gonna put up an assignment thing. That one will just be for what we did today, the Apple. And then I'll put up an assignment for the two point um, um, cityscape. Yeah? Mm -hmm um and i'm gonna let you guys go we're short today yeah cool and then we're gonna go into we'll go over that maybe i can get into brush creation on wednesday probably can because we'll probably go through the um cityscape thing pretty quick and then we'll we'll uh maybe do that over the weekend make some brushes and things and then come back in and start that start talking about that project and get started on it i like being in a project because then we're sort of working in something and then I can still add tools and I can still have these, just, these things I like to do off by themselves because I don't want to be in the middle of something else and go, okay, start playing around with the gradient mesh tool. Okay, now play with it. And then after that, it's usually just adding things in. And what I like about being in a project is you'll go, I want to do this and I'll go, okay, you can use this tool. And then I can start introducing tools in a sort of natural way into the project. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I like being in a, in a project. And then we always have something, you know, I just like being in a project. I think it's fun. You know, um, okay, guys, I'm gonna let you go. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. I'll see you guys later on Wednesday. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. you guys. All right. Bye.